أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونشكره ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مذل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له واشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول وبعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى أيضا شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليسم ومن كان مريدا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكمل العدة ولتكبر الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون سرق الله العظيم وقال رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم أحب الأعمال إلى الله أدومها وإن قلّه سرق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى. We glorify Him and we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى who has allowed us to witness this Ramadan. And we beg Allah سبحانه وتعالى for His mercy and His forgiveness. And we beg Allah سبحانه وتعالى. اللهم بلغنا ليلة القدر. O oh Allah, allow us to witness Laylatul Qadr and grant us the reward of Laylatul Qadr. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show his peace and blessings unto his beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and unto his household and his companions and unto all those who follow him. And we sincerely beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to count each and every one of us amongst the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear gathering, Ramadan, the month of preparation, the month of training, the month of rehab, the month of transformation is all but gone. And nothing remains of Ramadan except a few days. A few days ago, we were congratulating each other with the arrival of Ramadan, Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan Kareem. Today, we are seeking Laylatul Qadr and we are making preparation for Eid. And such is the nature of this dunya. It does not stay on the same condition. There were many who were with us last Ramadan, or even at the beginning of Ramadan, and they are not with us today. And one Ramadan will come, and you I, and I will not be here. And this is the nature of this dunya. And the rapid passing of the days and the night is a confirmation of one of the signs of Yawm al Qiyamah that time will pass rapidly. And my dear gathering, with these few days, these few moments that remain, I would like today to do two things. Firstly, how do we make sure we cross the finish line in the best possible way? 
Because a race is not over until you cross the finish line. It does not matter how fast or how slow you go, but the race is not over until the finish line is crossed. So how do we make sure we cross this finish line fully charged, well prepared? We cross this finish line as winners. How do we make sure we cross the finish line with more energy than we had at the beginning? And secondly, how do we ensure that after the finish line, we remain champions, we remain winners, we remain charged after the finish line. So the first thing, how do we make sure that we maximize our benefit during these remaining days and cross this finish line in a way that we are not crossing it empty-handed? One great scholar of Islam, Imam Ibn al-Jawzi, he says to us that a race horse, when it senses the finish line, it exerts more energy, it makes more effort to cross that line. So do not be, do not be less than the race horse. Don't allow the race horse to be more clever and smarter than you. But make sure you gallop because actions are judged by their ending. And I recommend for myself and you the things that we need to do to ensure that we are really maximizing our effort and reaping the maximum benefit during these remaining moments of Ramadan. And the first thing is, is that we should hasten during these remaining days and nights, hasten to petition Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have your sins erased, to have your sins dismissed, to have your sins wiped out. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he taught us that during these days, during these nights, what do we do? You say, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fuafuanni. That you cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you petition him. And you say, oh Allah, you love to erase sin. You love to dismiss sins. That I am a sinner. And I don't even deserve your forgiveness. But I'm still begging you to erase my sin. So during these remaining days and nights of Ramadan, let us make sure that we constantly turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and come to our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our case that, Oh Allah, I acknowledge that I have wronged myself. I am making sincere tawbah. I acknowledge that I have wronged myself and I regret it. And I'm determined not to go back to it. And I cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pour my heart out to him and I beg him, Oh Allah, forgive me for the wrong things I have done against myself, for the wrong things I have done to others, to my family member, to other people. Forgive me for all the disobedience. These are the days and nights in which we should seek with much energy to have all our mistakes wiped out. And while we do that, while we do that, let us make sure that we ourselves are forgiven. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We all love. We all love for Allah to forgive us. Why can't we as well Forgive each others, overlook their mistakes, pardon them. Like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, forgive each other 70 times. Why can we forgive our spouses, our children, our brothers and sisters, our in-laws? 
forgive them once or twice. Just like we have committed so many mistakes over and over again, and we love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. So let us during these days and nights seek Allah's forgiveness. Then secondly, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us, these are the days and nights for dua. These are the days and nights for dua where we cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't waste a moment. Every spare moment you have, you should be asking. You should be begging. You should be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for yourself, for your family, for your community. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to witness Laylatul Qadr and to accept from us. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for more Ramadan. Especially, especially when we stand in the night, as Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to us that during the last third of the night, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven, and he says, who is asking? Who is calling? Who is seeking forgiveness? So I can answer, so I can forgive. So don't lose that opportunity my brothers and sisters, to petition Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to beg, to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that desperation that, oh Allah, if you do not forgive us, we will be among the losers. Come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with an attentive heart. Come and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your needs. It is not about those poetic du'as. But you, each and every one of us, come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and cry our heart out to Him and say, Oh Allah, this is what I need. Help me, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you come with that need. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves when you ask. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves when you come to Him. He says, when you come to Him, He says, In the Qurib, I am there. So come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, come with that desperation, come with your case. And you should know, my brothers and sisters, no matter how big your sins are, no matter what you have done in the past, your case is not lost. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, Don't despair. You have wronged yourself, don't give up. Just come and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, He is there. Why Allah loves when you ask? Because when you ask, you're acknowledging who you are. You're acknowledging who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. He's independent and you are dependent because you're asking Him. You are reminding yourself how, how helpless you are. And Allah loves that when you come to Him and you acknowledge that He is your Rabb. So keep asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thirdly, my brothers and sisters, during these remaining moments of Ramadan, if we really want to cross that finish line as winners, let us make sure we fix our homes. Fix your family relationship. Fix your relationship, my brothers and sisters. Don't allow it to come and you have issues with your brothers and sisters, with your in-laws, with your spouse, with others in your community. Fix your relationship. Learn to forgive each other. Learn to have patience and tolerance. Learn to make excuse for each other. Like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, find excuse for your brothers and sisters, and if you can't find, then make up excuse for them. Not because your brothers or sisters or someone in your household make a mistake or two mistakes or three mistakes that they automatically become evil. Think about that same husband that you had good times with. Think about the goodness in your wife. Think about the goodness in your in-laws and your brothers and sisters. And learn as Ramadan taught us. Learn to say, Inni saw him. Control yourself. Don't have that anger. Learn to forgive each other. Learn to protect your family. And my dear brothers and sisters, as we seek to maximize our benefit in these last moments of Ramadan, reflect on Allah's mercy. 
how merciful Allah has been to us, how kind Allah has been to us, that He has blessed us with Ramadan. He has blessed us with this opportunity to turn back to Him. And while we gather here in safety and security, reflect that there are many of our brothers and sisters who are living under the shade of bombs and cannons, who don't have shelter over their head, who don't have a meal. While we fast and we face the hunger, we still look forward for a beautiful iftar. And we know there is iftar at the end. But there are millions of our brothers and sisters who don't know what is the end for them, how they will satisfy their hunger. So think about them and give gratitude, give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by digging deep into your wallet, especially during these moments. Dig deep in your pocket and thank Allah for what he has blessed you with. Because the purpose of fasting is لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may develop piety, consciousness of Allah. But the purpose of Ramadan is لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ That's the purpose of Ramadan. For you to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For you to be thankful for His bounties. For you to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us with this source of guidance. For blessing us with His kitab, with the Quran. And how do we show thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us with this beautiful guidance? By making sure that we strengthen our ties with the Book of Allah, that we renew our ties with the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially during these days and nights, I sincerely advise myself and you, my brothers, if you have not done so at the beginning of Ramadan, don't waste these moments. Build that personal connection with the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sit with it. We listen to it in the Salah. We listen to the recitation so much in Ramadan, but each and every one of us need to build a connection. Because if you don't build that connection, you will not achieve the full benefit of Ramadan. Because the purpose, the whole goal of Ramadan is for us to make us, for, for, to make the Quran a source of guidance for us. For us to be attached to it, for us to be plugged into this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Connect with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because when you connect with the book of Allah, it will purify your heart. It will remove envy and malice. It will make you humble. The Quran, if it was revealed unto a mountain, it would crush that mountain. The mountain will humble itself. Think about what the Qur'an will do to your heart if you really connect to it. Don't make your heart harder than the mountain. Connect to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go to the book of Allah and study a verse. And look for yourself. Where am I in the Qur'an? Where is my qualities? What are the things I need to do? What are the things I need to stop doing? How do I build my relationship with each other? How do I conduct myself? Because when you have a true connection to the Book of Allah, then that will take you past the finish line and will continue with after. So we need to make sure, my brothers and sisters, during these remaining moments of Ramadan, that we really connect every male, every female, every old and young. That should be our priority. To connect to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let us work during these days and nights to cleanse our heart. Because righteousness, taqwa, cannot penetrate a heart that is contaminated with greed and pride and anger and envy and malice and cheating. Cannot penetrate a heart that is contaminated with haram substance. So let us make sure our hearts are clean and pure. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
He once said about one of his companions while he was sitting with other companions and a certain companion was walking by and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he pointed to that companion and he says innahu min ahlil jannah that man is from the people of jannah and knowing the companions of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how much they were eager to know how to get to jannah how much they want jannah like all of us want jannah but they were more eager than us they decided they will find out what is so special about that individual. So one of them made an excuse and he went and he spent some time with that individual trying to see what is special about this man. Is he praying all night? Is he fasting every day? Is he reciting Quran all day? What is he doing? And the only thing they find that this man was doing what he needs to do like every other believer, like every other companion. So the companion who was trying to find, he asks, he says, I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this special thing about you, that you are a people, you will be among the people of Jannah. What is so special? And that companion says, there is nothing special, but there is one thing that I make sure when I go to bed at night, that my heart is clean. My heart is clean. There is no envy, there is no animosity. There is no pride. So let us seek to cleanse our hearts so that taqwa and iman and righteousness can penetrate our hearts. And during these days and nights, my brothers and sisters, as we do all these ibadat, let us reflect on the day when we will meet our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us reflect on yawm al qiyamah. Let these gatherings, as we gather for Jum'ah, and when we gather for iftar, and when we gather for all our salah, let it remind us that one day we will gather in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a similar matter, but there will, be, there will be one difference. Today we gather and we look at each other, and we care so much for each other, and we admire each other, and we smile with each other, but on that day, Remind yourself, you will be focused on yourself. That day, your mother and father will be by your side and your brothers and sisters will be there. But you will run away from them because they will come asking for the rights that you did not give them in this dunya. And you will see your mother and you will run away and your father and you will run away. You will be worried about yourself. That is the day when the bridge, a bridge will be laid out over Jahannam and each and every one of us will cross it in a matter that fits our deeds. Those who hasten to do good deeds will cross with the speed of lightning. Those who are slow will cross it slowly as well. Many will fall. I beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all and allow us all to cross that bridge with the speed of lightning. But let us, let these remaining moments days and nights of Ramadan reminds us of who we are and where we are going, that we are returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is the day where we will stand in front of him and no brother or sister, no parents, no uncles or aunt, no amount of wealth, not our position will help us, nothing will help us except our deeds and my dear gathering, during these remaining moments, I advise myself and you, enjoy it. Enjoy what remains of Ramadan. What remains of Ramadan, treat it like a vacation where you enjoy every moment of it. When you stand in your salah, in Qiyam al enjoy it. Where you are, when you are in that private conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are speaking to him, stand in your salah as if you don't want it to end. You don't want that conversation to be over. You're enjoying it. When you make sujood, enjoy it. You want to stay there. Because that's the position, lowest position you can be. That's the position of a slave in front of his master. Enjoy that position. When you fast the remaining days of Ramadan, enjoy it. 
take some time out. If not every night, if not all night, take some time out. One hour, two hours, three hours, whatever it is. And that's your time, that's your vacation with your Rabb. That's your vacation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us enjoy what remains of Ramadan with our Rabb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last thing I recommend for myself and you to cross this finish line full of energy is us, for us to seek Laylatul Qadr. And how do we seek it? All the things that I have mentioned. Seek it by seeking forgiveness, by making dua, by connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by fixing your relationship, by reflecting on who you are, by reflecting on the Akhirah. Because Ramadan is an annual bath. So don't allow it to come and you are still the same way like you were before Ramadan. And Laylatul Qadr is not a celebration. It's not a night of speeches. It's a night of ibadah. And all these remaining nights of Ramadan should be for ibadah. Ramadan is that battery charger. So don't allow Eid to come and meet you with a flat battery. We still have some days to charge, to gallop to the finish line. And this, what's probably me, the last Jummah in this month of Ramadan, there are many people who will say a sad farewell to Ramadan. I advise myself and you, don't be among those. Don't say farewell to Ramadan because Ramadan is not leaving. You and I are leaving. Ramadan will come again and you and I may not be here. So say farewell, not to Ramadan, but to our bad habits. Say farewell to greed and pride and envy. Say farewell to laziness. Say farewell to not waking up for Salatul Fajr. Now that you are waking up every morning for Salatul Fajr, let that stay with you. And say farewell to laziness from now on. And if you are sad that Ramadan is leaving, then don't allow it to go. Take Ramadan with you. Take the teachings of Ramadan, the lessons of Ramadan, the smile that you have in Ramadan, take it with you for the rest of the year. The control, the self-control you have in Ramadan, the good relationship you have with your brothers and sisters and your family, take it with you for the rest of the year. That generosity that you put your hand in your pocket in Ramadan, take it with you for the rest of the year. My brothers and sisters, as we rush to the finish line, do not say farewell, but let us all gallop so that when Eid comes, inshallah, we can all graduate with flying colors. That we can all graduate not with a triple crown, but we can all graduate with the Eid crown. Because Eid means to return. So when Eid comes, inshallah, we are returning to what? To a state of purity. To a state without sins. To a state that you are fully charged. That you are ready for the rest of the year. Aqulu qawli haza wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'i muslimin. Astaghfiruhu innahu al rahim الحمد لله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My dear gathering, how do we ensure that after we cross the finish line, that after Eid, we remain as winners? Ramadan has come, then alhamdulillah, we perform our salah on time, and we fast, and we recite Quran, and we've been generous, and we smile with each other, and we build our taqwa, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward and accept from us. 
But how do we make sure we don't destroy that? Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, وَلَا تَقُولُوا كَلَّتِي نَقَدَرْ غَزْلَهَا مِنْ بَعَلِكُوَا Don't be like the one who destroy her position of strength. After you've been in that position of strength, after you've been fully charged and been strong, don't destroy it. And how do we make sure we don't destroy it? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَحَبُّهَا وَإِنْ قَلْ That the most beloved deeds to Allah are those that are continuous, that are consistent, even though if it is little, but you do it all the time. So let us make sure that after Eid, we continue the good training, the good lessons from Ramadan, we continue after Eid. Because the first challenge we all face after Eid, even the morning of Eid, we all face the challenge of waking up for Salatul Fajr. Salah is our major challenge after Eid. You should know that next Friday, it's still Jum'ah. And the Friday after is Jum'ah. And there is still five daily salah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told us not to pray. But he says, وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةِ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ يُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاءِ That salah is something that is a pillar. Everything else can move. Your TV can move, your show can move, your luxury can move, your lunch can move, your job can move, everything can move. But if you move the pillar, the building will crumble. If we remove salah from our lives, if we start to be negligent after Eid about our salah, we will destroy what we have built and achieved in Ramadan. Let us hold on to that. أَوَّلُ مَا يُحَاسَبُ عَلَيْهِ الْعَبْدُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ As-salah. That's the first thing you will be questioned about on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, your salah. So make sure you hold on. Hold on to your salah. And don't unplug yourself if you want to really remain winners after Eid. Don't unplug yourself from the Book of Allah. During these days and nights, try to develop that connection and let it stay with you because that's your source of energy. That's your live wire. Hold on to the rope of Allah. Hold on to his source of guidance. Hold on to his book. Don't let go. Because if you let go, you will drown. If you let go of that connection, if you pull that plug, you will go astray. You will be among the loser. You will destroy what you have achieved in Ramadan. Don't do that, my brothers and sisters. Hold on to the Book of Allah. Maintain your salah. Maintain your connection to the Book of Allah. And thirdly, do not return to sins. Don't be careless about sins. In Ramadan, we have been so careful how we talk to each other. Especially in our homes, we have control. I know of some non-Muslims who told me they, in this month of Ramadan they stay away from alcohol. You know what that proves to them and to us? That we are capable of staying away from sins. That we are capable of controlling ourselves. That we are capable of not lying. That we are capable of not cheating each other. That we are capable of being honest and modest and humble and sincere and polite. That we are capable of having tolerance with each other. This is what Ramadan proves, that you're capable of doing it. So don't explode after Ramadan. Because sins will wipe out what you have built in Ramadan. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Two rakah sincerely for the sake of Allah is better than a thousand rakah mixed with sins. Don't mix your life with sins after Ramadan. Because sin extinguishes that light from your heart. 
sins wipe out knowledge because knowledge is a lie that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in our hearts but when you sin when you are being dishonest when you lie when you show that anger when you shout at each other when you miss your salah that light in your heart extinguishes no matter which university you attend no matter what you memorize no matter what book you read there is no knowledge once that light is out sins will cause your life to be difficult your relationship with each other will be difficult sins will deprive you from the provision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your earning will be difficult and most importantly and I beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his protection sins will deprive us from the sweetness of ibadah sins will deprive you from the sweetness of worship because when you worship Allah there is a special sweetness but when you commit sin it will deprive you of that sweetness just like someone who eats something that destroy their health what that does to them later in their life there is delicious food there is all the things to be enjoyed but they cannot enjoy it because they have destroyed they now live on medication just like someone who lose their taste buds you have the beautiful delicious dishes but you can't enjoy it or someone who lose their sense of smell the beautiful fragrance exists but you can't enjoy it similarly don't commit sins because it will deprive you of the sweetness of worship and it will put a seal on your heart when you commit sins it put a seal on your heart that righteousness cannot enter that good things can't enter and i beg allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all from sins and to allow us to allow us to cross the finish line fully energized for we beg allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our sincere tawbah to help us to be connected to his book beg allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to fix our relationship in our homes beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to witness Laylatul Qadr and to reap the reward of Laylatul Qadr and I beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us that after Eid that we continue connected continue attached to his book continue establishing our salah and I beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all from all sins big sins and small sins Allah protect us us Protect us all from that which displeases you. Ibad Allah, ittaqullah, inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsan, wa ita idil kurba, wa yanha anil fahshai wal munka wal bakh, ya'idukum lallakum tadakkaroon, akim as-salam. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wal'asr inna al-insana lafi khusr. إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر